Go. Hi there, Steve again, and hello, Kieran. And we're going to go over your questions, which we've collected. Now, I can't answer all the questions, but I've collected them to some extent, and we're going to hopefully answer most of the questions. So go ahead, shoot here. Okay, so the first one, writing systems cause problems in language learning. How do you deal with different writing systems in Chinese and Russian, etc.? And etc., exactly, Korean. And I remember the question was, how do you, like Chinese, how do you start listening and reading when you can't read anything? With Chinese, what I did when I learned Chinese, I spent the first month only sort of listening and using pinyin. In those days, it was a different system for, you know, uh, using a Roman or a Latin alphabet. So I listened and I read in the Romanization system that, that we used at that time. And then after a month, I went heavy duty into learning the characters. And I learned the first thousand most frequently used characters as a deliberate exercise. I would study 10, eventually 30 a day, forget them, relearn them, separate from my reading and listening. After about a thousand characters, I just learned the, the characters as I went. But with a character-based writing system, you have to make a deliberate effort to learn the characters. Once you get to a phonetic writing system, like uh, like Cyrillic script for Russian, is really not very difficult because it's kind of almost parallel to the Latin alphabet with a few other symbols. So basically, you, you learn it, you don't really understand it, you start reading, it's difficult to read, you continue reading and listening, and gradually it becomes more and more comfortable. The same is true for, say, the Korean script or the kana script in Japanese. Those are easier to get used to and you get used to them as you read. But where you have characters to learn, that's a, that's a big chore. You have to do it and you have to do it every day and consistently for a good, you know, few months. Okay. So the next one. In English, the spelling is so irregular that pronunciation becomes a problem. How do you deal with that? We got a bit of a message coming in. Yeah, in English, that's almost another situation where the writing system is different from the way the language is pronounced. Okay. If someone asked me, do you use the International Phonetic Alphabet? I don't. But okay. maybe if, if you know, as my approach to language learning is whatever works for you. I'm not interested in learning another writing system because I have to get used to how those, those symbols are used to represent these sounds. So I listen to the sounds and I see how it's represented in that language and I try to get used to it. So yeah, with English, you just have to get used to the fact that, you know, O-U-G-H can be though, thou, you know, all uh, tough, rough, through, just have to get used to it. Uh, so, uh, personally, I don't use the IPA, International Phonetical, Phonetic Alphabet, but some people love it, so okay. it's just a matter of choice. All right. Okay, so here's another good one. Uh, I'm learning English in Vancouver. Most graded readers use the British accent. Is this a problem if I want to learn to speak with a North American accent? Okay, the issue of accents comes up all the time, not only in English, yep. but in Spanish, in Portuguese. There's many languages where, you know, the pronunciation can vary from region to region. That is to say the native speaking, you know, pronunciation. Right. Personally, I don't worry about it. My main job when I start learning a language is to make sure I can understand and that I accumulate a large vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So typically for Spanish, for example, I want to make sure that I can un understand someone from Mexico, from Argentina, from Spain, uh, in Portuguese, someone from Brazil and from Portugal. However, I then decide which pronunciation is the most useful to me. I see. If okay. I'm going to be working in Quebec, I want to learn Quebec pronunciation. If I'm going to be working in Brazil, I want to learn Brazilian Portu uh, Portuguese. So then I focus, f for the purposes of imitating the accent, I focus on those sources that speak the way I want to speak and I try to mm -hmm. imitate them but I don't limit myself to that I actually will deal with a large variety of content and typically the vocabulary is extremely similar between yeah. Portugal Brazil Mexico Spain Quebec France is largely the same vocabulary mm -hmm. okay so uh, someone here who's using link says uh, how many times should I study a lesson question should I focus on grammar uh, vocabulary structure how do I proceed okay in link or if you're learning not using link uh, I believe that listening and reading is the most powerful way to learn the language to bring it in subconsciously and this is what I'm doing with Polish with the wonderful material that filter has developed okay. I don't focus on should I learn the conjugation should I learn the structure while I'm listening though and typically with like 
when I'm doing with Polish, I'll often use the sentence view in our iLink on my iPad, and then I can really look at the structures to remind myself, to help my brain learn. But it's not as if I'm, I'm sort of block studying conjugation tables, because I find that very often, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time, but it's, it's limit, limited in what it can do for you. Occasionally I'll refer to these and quickly forget it. And so the bulk of my time is spent listening, reading, and of course, creating links, saving words and phrases on link. And so you're just following the content, reading or listening to the content, yeah. learning about other things, and subconsciously absorbing the language. And as to how many times, again, it's, uh, it's up to you. Typically when I start, I listen often to the same material because I don't understand it very well. And as I progress in the language, I listen less frequently to the same lesson. And basically, I move on at link when I'm bored. <laughs> okay, I don't have to understand 70% or 80%. When I'm tired of the lesson, I move on okay. because it's all exposure. Yeah, that's a good idea. So when you are reading, do you ignore words and phrases that you find difficult to understand? Absolutely. I'll look up the word. Yeah. I might look up three or four words. It still doesn't make sense. I can't make sense of this sentence. I can't make sense of the lesson. I don't worry about it. I'm confident and my experience tells me three months from now that'll all make sense. Right now, it doesn't make sense. There's no use beating your head against a brick wall. I just move on. Okay. So uh, uh, one, one uh, person's asking here, they have online discussions with a Spanish-speaking language partner. His English is much better than my Spanish. I'm too embarrassed to speak Spanish. What should I do? You know, when we speak a foreign language, we are embarrassed. Yeah. We don't speak as well as in our own language. If you want to be totally comfortable, sound intelligent, and all the rest of it, stay with your native language. When you speak a foreign language, you're gonna sound dumb, you're gonna sound like a child, you're gonna make mistakes. That's part of the package, you just have to do it. And I'm sure that your language partner is quite content to you know, patiently talk to you in Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll of course help him or her with her English, and that's the deal. So what can I say? Just you have to break through that initial sense of embarrassment and once you get comfortable using your new language and congratulating yourself for what you're able to do, rather than worrying about the mistakes that you made, you'll find that you'll develop this new habit of speaking with mistakes and enjoying it. All right. Okay, and last one here. How do you get motivated to learn a new language? Related to that, what about learning two languages at the same time? And what about learning dead languages like Latin, for example? Or ancient Greek. Or ancient Greek, yes. All right, the motivation is your interest. Mm -hmm. So if I'm interested in ancient Greek and Latin, I'm gonna go after them. We have Latin at link, we don't have ancient Greek, but the, the learning process is the same. I don't know if there's audio available for ancient Greek. There is audio available for Latin, and we're using it at link. Learning two languages at the same time, if you're learning them both from scratch, is difficult. I don't do it because I find that once I get motivated to learn a language, I'm so motivated that I want to spend all my time on that language. So I really don't have much time for a second language. But I, I don't think it's bad for you to learn two languages at the same time. In fact, to some extent, it may help you. It might be very good for the brain to keep things fresh. But because motivation is such a big part of language learning, in fact, if I'm motivated like now to do Polish, I find it very difficult to take time away to spend on my Korean, for example. Okay. Well. That was it for That's this it. Week. Okay. I hope we answered every question and uh, continue on your 90 day challenge. See you guys next time.